one sure sign that somebody cares about your welfare is they tell you the truth, no matter how uncomfortable it makes you and them feel. Because the truth is worth the pain, right? The truth sets you free. What truth? Umar ibn al-Khattab anhu would say to the Sahaba, May Allah have mercy on the one who shows me my faults. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. So, here's someone who claims to be a true Christian. And they all watch his videos day in, day out. Some probably spend more hours going through his videos than they spend sat beside their own families. So you'd hope, you'd hope that he'd respect his fellow Christians enough to at least not lie to them. I imagine even a godless pagan would submit to this ethic. But what does this so-called Christian apologist do instead? Well, he spends all day long as a full-time YouTuber planning how to best manipulate his fellow Christians, finding better ways to make them less intelligent than they were before they watched his videos. For example, let's look at some recent um, examples on his channel. Take this Sahih Bukhari Hadith, narrated Sal bin Sa'ad. The Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever guarantees me the chastity of what is between his legs, i.e. his private parts, and what is between his jaws, i.e. his tongue, I guarantee him paradise. Very simply, this hadith obviously means that one should avoid sins of the tongue, i.e. backbiting, slander, insulting others, and the like. You know, you should speak the truth, forbid evil, etc. And the part about whoever protects what is between his legs refers to avoiding fornication and abstaining things like immoral acts. As a hadith, it expounds a perfectly fine moral lesson. Unless, unless you've got a disgusting and degenerate mind. The translator tries really hard to make this sound less creepy by adding some clarification in parentheses. He adds the chastity of his private parts and his mouth, his tongue. If we take out these additions, we see what Muhammad actually said. He said, whoever guarantees me what is between his legs and what is between his jaws, I guarantee him paradise. So you have to ask yourself, what kind of a sane person does this? Is this the kind of person Christian teaching produces? So take this hadith. Abu Huraira reported Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam having said, By him in whose hand is my life, if you were not to commit sin, Allah would sweep you out of existence and he would replace you by those people who would commit sin and seek forgiveness from Allah and he would have pardoned them, end quote. Now this is actually an amazing hadith which is highlighting Allah's mercy and forgiveness to encourage Muslims who sin, which is all of them, to never lose hope and to always seek repentance because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes to forgive and is oft forgiving and most merciful. But once again, David Wood twists this beautiful message of hope and renewal into this. I honestly can't believe that his viewers don't realize that they're so obviously being taken for a ride that it's actually insulting to them, to them, that he would think that he can get away with it. I mean, he's not even hiding it anymore. At this point, he thinks his audience is just so gullible and so prejudiced that whatever outrageous lie or slander, however silly or absurd, he puts out there, they'd simply buy it. It kind of speaks volumes about how badly or how he views his audience. And it's not good. 
And there are numerous such examples littered all over his sordid channel. So, what could be the cause of this type of appalling human behaviour? Fear. This man doesn't have it in him to tell his subs the objective truth, because, frankly, he doesn't trust them with that info. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! It appears to me he thinks they simply aren't intelligent enough. <laughs> you stupid! <laughs> nor do they have the strength or faith in Jesus to withstand what real Islam offers, and he fears they might end up liking what they hear and even convert to Islam like many do. So, instead, as a precaution, he'd rather treat his viewers like fragile little children who need to be protected by a great wall of lies, and they certainly shouldn't be trusted to think for themselves. Son, we live in a world that has walls, and those walls have to be guarded by men with guns. Who's going to do it? So he takes Islamic sources, manipulates the meaning very crudely at times, thereby controlling what they see and hear about Islam. Now, by putting a negative spin, by ridiculing Islam, he manages to control and, and impose on them what he wants them to think, what he wants his viewers to believe about Islam. I have a greater responsibility than you can possibly fathom. It's actually a very disturbing mindset. Narcissism comes to mind. Authoritarian, even. I would rather you just said thank you. I don't give a damn what you think you are entitled to. A lack of faith in his own religion, too, perhaps. Now, we all know the archetypical story of Judas, who sold Jesus in exchange for some silver. Although he states he's a Christian, David Wood is doing something chillingly similar to that infamous individual who apparently represents the opposite of what Christianity teaches. But there are obvious parallels. He's in charge of an entire YouTube operation, Acts 17 Apologetics, 600,000k plus subs, with all the trappings it offers, money, donations, influence. But it's all built around a tower of deception and a transaction of lies. It's a very unhealthy project that won't end well.